Welcome, and thank you for joining today's State, Local, Tribal, and Private Sector Policy Advisory Committee, Committee meeting, also known as the SLTPS PAC. To receive all pertinent information about upcoming SLTPS PAC meetings, please subscribe to the Information Security Oversight Office's Overview blog at ISOO, that's I-S-O-O, hyphen overview, dot blogs, dot archives, dot gov, or by going to the Federal Register. All available meeting materials have been emailed to all registrants. We ask committee members to please mute all audio connections when you are not speaking. If you are not a member of the SLTPS PAC and would like to ask a question or make a comment, please press pound 2 on your phone to join the queue. This is a public meeting. Like previous SLTPS PAC meetings, this will be recorded. This recording, along with the transcript and minutes, will be available within 90 days on the NISPAC Reports on Committee Activities webpage. Let me now turn things over to Mr. Bill Fisher, the Acting Director of ISU, as well as the Acting Chairman of the SLTPS PAC. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 25th meeting of the State, Local, Tribal, and Private Sector Policy Advisory Committee. I'm Bill Fisher, the Acting Director of ISU. I'm watching over ISU until a permanent director is hired. Mark Bradley retired in June, and I've been in this position since July. For your awareness, a vacancy announcement for the ISU director position was posted this Monday, September 18th. I'm the director of the National Declassification Center at the National Archives in my permanent position. My career has included archival functions, records management, FOIA, declassification, and overall federal information policy and operations. This is a new area for me, and I'm glad to learn more about the vital work that you do concerning policies relating to access and safeguarding of classified national security information by state, local, tribal, and private sector entities. I will now turn it over to my designated federal officer, Heather Harris Pagan. Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome to ISU. I continue to I, I look forward to continuing to work with you. I will now begin attendance. We've already heard from Bill Fisher, the acting chairman of the SLTPS, SLTPS PAC Vice Chairman Rich McComb, Department of Energy's alternate Tracy Kindle. Tracy, are you on the call? I'm here. I'm here, Heather. Thank you. Sorry Thank about you. that. No problem. Nuclear Regulatory Commission member, Tara Inverso. Hi, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. NRC's alternate, Daryl Parsons. Department of Transportation, Sedoni Dunham. Present. Thank you. Department of Defense member, Michael Russo. Office of the Director of National Intelligence member, Lisa Perez. Thank you, I'm present. Thank you. Federal Bureau of Investigation member, Jake Zockert. What about FBI's alternate, Scott Gerlach? Department of State member, Kate Conner. Good morning, I'm on the line. Good morning, Kate. State's, state's alternate, Darrell Hicks. Good morning. I'm here. Good morning. Department of Justice member, Glenn Beasley. Bensley. Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency member, Keith Miner. What about DCSA's alternate, Derek Broussard? Good morning. I'm here, Heather. Good morning, Derek. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency member, Nitin Neritajan. Local East member, Megan Tubner. I'm here. Thank you, Megan. Local East member, Shelly Schechter. Private sector member, Jeffrey Insall. 
State Mountain Region member, Kevin Klein. Present. Thank you. Private sector member, Cam Burks. Good morning, I'm here. Good morning, Cam. State Midwest member, Jeremy Sroka. Good morning, Heather, I'm present. Good morning, thank you. DHS speaker, Ivana Horn. Yes, hi, Heather. Hi, Ivana. Uh, assistant speaker, Ms. Elena Clark. Yes, I'm here, thank you. Thank you, and assistant speaker, Trent Fisher. Uh, it was gonna be Trent or I, so I'm covering for both oh, of us. Got it, all right, thank you so much. We request that everyone identify themselves by name and agency, if applicable, before speaking each time for the record. Is anyone else expected to speak during the SLTPS pack that we have not heard from? Heather, uh, this is Don from CIA. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Sorry about that, Don. Um, Ms. Evans, is anyone raising their hand on the phone line? Not at this time. Thank you. I want to remind government membership of the requirement to annually file a financial disclosure report with the National Archives and Records Administration Office of General Counsel. The same form of financial disclosure that is used throughout the federal government, OGE Form 450, satisfies reporting requirements. If you have any, request, if you have any questions, let me know. The charter for the SLTPS PAC is expected to be renewed on September 30th, 2023, and will be effective for two years. We've had a few changes to the PAC membership since the last meeting. As Mr. Fisher mentioned, Mark Bradley, the former director of IC and chairman of the SLTPS PAC, has retired, and Bill has stepped in to replace him until we have someone uh, hired to permanently replace Mark. As Bill said, the job announcement just went out earlier this week, so please apply if, um, if you are interested. Additionally, Valerie Kerbin, the primary member with the Office of National Intelligence, has retired and has been replaced by Lisa Perez, who was already the alternate. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission's new primary member is Tara Inverso, replacing Sabrina Itak. Cam Birch, the Chief Security Officer of Roku, is a new member as of last month, as is Jeremy Stroka, representing the Midwest in Iowa for State Matters. As a reminder, we still have several slots that are open for membership. If you have any nominations, please bring them to our attention. For those departing members, thank you for all your contributions over the years. We look forward to continuing the work you have done with the new representatives. The minutes from the last meeting were finalized and posted to the ICU website on January 26, 2023. I will, now address the item, I will now address the items of interest from the January 4, 2023 SLTPS PAC public meeting. The FBI is still working on providing its SLTPS security clearance data to DCSA to include, if possible, the effort to identify non-task force officers in their systems for inclusion in the data transfers. The SLTPS PAC has been focusing on this issue for a few years. The FBI reported that they had been engaged in end-to-end -end testing of the data transfer process with the CSA. At this time, the clearance data held by the FBI pertaining to private sector personnel has been passed to the FBI's Phoenix platform to the Central Verification System, also known as CVS. Because of that, this action is considered closed unless otherwise requested. <clears throat> For the second outstanding action item, ICU hosted a meeting in its SCIF March 2, 2023, with other entities to examine why the intelligence community is unable to determine the current number of SLTPS personnel that it has cleared and to seek a means to obtain this information. This action item is considered closed unless otherwise requested due to DHS having a firm handle on their numbers. For the third action item, the DHS Vice Chair and Executive Agent of the SLTPS program provided the recommendations to the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, also known as CISA. Due to this, the action is, this action item is considered closed unless otherwise requested, leaving no action items open. Does anyone have any questions? Ms. Evans, is anyone in the queue? If anyone 
uh, would like to speak, please press pound two on your phones. There are no hands raised at this time. Thank you. At this time, we would like to now hear from the executive agent for the program, the Department of Homeland Security. Ms. Horn? Can you hear Ms. me? Horn? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Ivana Horn. I'm with the Department of Homeland Security Office of Chief Security Officer. I am standing in uh, for uh, Mr. McComb uh, today due to his unavailability. And I just wanted to go over a couple of things as we wrap up FY23 and start moving uh, towards FY24. Uh, so I'll start with where we are number, uh, number wise. DHS across the board has approximately 7,800 SLTPS personnel with DHS sponsored clearances. 89% of that population holds a secret level clearance and 11% of that population is at the TS level. As far as SLPPS compliance and governance, uh, DHS has performed uh, one room certification and performed security performance assessments, which are routine, on 22 facilities uh, nationwide uh, that we sponsored and accredited. Uh, just the findings from both are about 55% of the security performance assessments fell under findings fell under the category of information security discipline. Uh, the findings have all been mitigated or uh, on the spot or were within 30 days of the report being issued. So uh, the vulnerabilities have been closed out. And those are kind of the big updates for 23. Uh, in FY24, we plan on doing assessing another 22 SLCPS facilities which were sponsored by DHS. The other piece that uh, we started in FY23 that will continue into 24 is we are working with the components to validate and need to know and access levels of all federal and contractor personnel, but also as part of that our SLTPS community to make sure that we have the right people and access to, uh, and uh, for those individuals to have clearances if they've departed or moved on and those have been identified and we were properly leading them out as well. So that reconciliation began in 23 and it's going to continue through 24 to ensure we are uh, mitigating all risk as well as uh, closing out any vulnerabilities we may have. I think that's the big update from DHS as we close out 23. Uh, any questions for me? Uh, Kevin Klein here. Um, anything to address the tremendous backlog on new clearances? It, it's really become an issue for states and locals. DHS does not have a backlog for ours because we use, we do not use DCSA. We have a workload, and I do not have the current numbers available. But DHS as a whole is not experiencing a backlog. I know DCSA is. I don't know if, um, and I can get a, uh, get a get back on that to, prof uh, to provide numbers on where we are uh, with the state and local, what's in our queue currently. Um, but it, yeah, just when we met with our state, our state partners, they just said to get together and informally, uh, DHS sponsored clearances are way, way behind. So I, I'm not sure where the disconnect is there. Well, would the, and so the, I guess the question I say when you say way, way uh, behind, could you put a numerical figure on it or a timeline that will help me um, provide an answer on that? Well, uh, going from a couple of months to get a secret clearance to a year. Okay. Um, Okay, I will get provide uh, as a get back our timeliness on those as well as the numbers that were processed for FY23. That may help okay. at least answer that. Okay, thank you. That, that'd be great. It, you know, it'll help us ground truth, you know, what the feelings versus the reality is. So I appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. 
Um, this is Megan from um, New York City NYPD, and I just wanted to second the backlog. We've had people that we submitted for secret level clearances back in January, February, that haven't even received their SF-86 yet. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and we, we, we are being told that we're being told that it's because of a backlog. Okay. I will definitely get that as I get back to understand where we are, how many are in queue or anywhere in the pipeline to make sure we provide a clear update. Great. Thank you so much. Of course. Anybody else? If not, that's it for me, Heather. Thank you, Ms. Horn. Ms. Evans, is anyone waiting to ask a question? Not at this time, but again, for those joining who are not on the committee, you can press pound two to raise your hand. But we have no raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. At this time, we would now like to hear from Sissa. Ms. Clark, over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm stepping in for our Deputy Director, Nitin Natarajan, who sends his uh, regards. He was tied up with something and could not join. Um, it's great, actually, to be back with this group. I, um, for many years, participated in it when I was at uh, DHS headquarters, um, so great to be back here today. Uh, for those, uh, I know the Deputy joined at the January meeting. Um, this is um, mission spaces to understand, manage, and reduce the risk to our nation's critical infrastructure from both a cyber and physical perspective. And uh, we do this um, through a voluntary uh, mechanism with the critical infrastructure partners. And one of those key aspects is being able to ensure that within those 16 critical infrastructure sectors that we have cleared personnel um, so that we can appropriately brief them uh, as necessary at uh, varying classification levels on um, the threat and um, what we are seeing so that they can uh, uh, provide the appropriate, uh, make the appropriate adjustments and, and measures within their facilities to address um, that threat. And this was extremely helpful for us during um, the past um, uh, year and a half, or almost two years now, actually, as we were um, watching um, actions by Russia and leading up to and during the invasion of Ukraine. And so this was a vital mechanism that we as an agency used uh, across the interagency, on the federal side with our partners, um, and with the critical infrastructure partners as well. And so we truly value uh, our ability to share information at varying classification levels with these critical infrastructure partners. Um, and so uh, with that, would just love to pause. Um, I, I'm newer, as I, I mentioned, I know this is newer uh, from the January meeting uh, to this group. And so would be happy to address any questions um, that you might have about how CISA is partnering with the critical infrastructure sectors, um, how we are working to share information or clear these individuals. My team works very closely with our chief security office uh, to help get these individuals um, into the process uh, to get cleared. Um, so happy to address any questions that our interagency um, partners or other members of the SLTPS uh, PAC have uh, for me. So with that, Heather, I'll, I'm happy to open it up for questions. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions for Ms. Clark and Susan? All right, Ms. Evans, anyone waiting to ask a question on the phone line? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. We are now at the point of the meeting where we ask for SLTPS PAC members to present any new business they may have. Anyone? Cam, Jeremy, would either of you like to do anything as our new members? Hi, Heather, this is Cam. Just um, very happy to be part of the group and look forward to contributing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is Jeremy with Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to participate uh, with this group. And I also have concerns as well with uh, the backlog on um, clearances. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, we'll have that as an action item, um, and we'll get that information out before the next meeting. Um, as soon as we can get that um, disseminated, we will do so. 
All right. Um, are there any other questions or remarks before we close out today's meeting? Mr. Fisher, I'll now turn it over to you to close out the meeting. Mr. Fisher? You may still be muted, sir. It uh, looks like... I I will go ahead and close out. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and close out the meeting. Um, our next SOTPS pack is scheduled for February seventh, twenty twenty four. At that time, we will hopefully have a new director on board who will make the determination on whether the next meeting will be fully in person, fully virtual, or a hybrid. As a reminder, all SLPPS PAC meeting announcements are posted in the Federal Register approximately 30 days prior to the meeting, along with being posted to the IC blog. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>